Hello crypto people, Joey here from the Chart Guys. I've been trading for seven years, joined the Chart Guys six years ago as a member, and now I'm here to talk to you about some crypto. As everybody tuning in right now knows, we've got new highs on Bitcoin with bulls maintaining full control as they defended our key support, which is that daily 12 EMA over the weekend. So this is why we make statements like as long as bulls are holding daily 12 EMA, they maintain full control. It just makes trading simple. It's a it it can be a complicated game if you bring a lot of complications into it. And granted, while you're developing as a trader, you kind of have to go down all the little nooks and crannies to figure out what works for you, what you like, what fits with your personality style and whatnot. But whatever you end up settling on, if then statements are very helpful just to keep us looking in the right direction. And at this point, Bitcoin is up to new highs. We've got 6% off of the lows. And, and we were talking over the weekend in the chart guys chat room about how it's looking like bulls are going for the hold. Let's see, I don't have my wedge drawing on there, but when you see these lower lows continuing to not get follow through, that tells you that bears are really not doing their job. Um, you know, pretty nearly a, uh, let's see, where did that wedge break? I think this is what we were watching, something like that. Um, if bears are confident, when you go to lower lows, you see follow through. You don't just snap right back up into range. So that's kind of a little nuanced bit that can help shift probabilities within our if then statements. And at this point, we've got bulls on the move. So not only can these little clues like lower lows not seeing follow through help us shift some probabilities, then we can look for other patterns within. And we ended up having a nice 12 hour inverse head and shoulder left shoulder, head, right shoulder, it's now confirmed right to new highs, and we are cruising. So let's look at some short-term price action to see what we've got going. So just like in a little 15 minute uptrend, 15 minute 12 EMA as support, if bulls are holding that, they're in full control. If we lose that, that'll be the hourly stair step looking to break, and we'll be looking for an hourly higher low. And with RSI up above 80, certainly won't be surprising Next time we see some pullback, but we're going to be looking for higher lows on all time frames now at this point. So let's let's zoom out on Bitcoin. What do we have for resistances up here from a price action perspective? Pretty much just looking at the high of each week all the way up to all time highs. So we've got 59,176 is the next clear one. From a volume profile perspective, we have got some levels closer than that. We're going to be getting to this structure here. Let me let me shrink that up a little bit. We'll get rid of the RSI. So this little balance structure here is our next bit from a volume profile perspective. And you can see we've just kind of been ping ponging all this stuff on the way up. And at this point, that is at 56K essentially. Then we've got 57.3 is the POC. And then pretty much 59K, which aligns with that price action resistance. So we're in an area with a lack of resistance. We've got nice increasing bull volume. We have bulls in full control and we know bigger picture zoomed out. So this is where there's kind of tiers to the if then statements. If bulls are holding daily 12 EMA, then they're in absolute full control on the weekly. If bulls are holding weekly 12 EMA, then they're in absolute full control on the monthly. So you know, and, and on the talk of indicators and, and this and that, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what you use. And you can use a slew of different EMAs. The biggest thing is that you are familiar with how price relates to the EMAs you decide to use. But dang, if the 12 EMA isn't just the best. Um, I mean, look at on the weekly, just holding the 12 EMA. On the daily, just holding the 12 EMA. You see it again and again and again and again. So I don't know what the magic is about the 12, but I experimented with a bunch of other stuff and gosh dang if the 12 isn't just the best. So that's what we've got going on on Bitcoin. Let's go to ETH and you guessed it, 12 hour 12 EMA just continues to be our guide here as bulls push to new highs. And as far as resistance is here, Next big one we've got is 3581. And as long as bulls are holding 12 hour 12 EMA, 
They're in absolute full control on the daily. If bears were able to take out the 12 hour 12 EMA and the daily 12 EMA, then we'd have weekly consolidation. And as long as bulls are holding weekly 12 EMA, they're in full control on the monthly. So just keeping these statements clear, concise, and consistent so that we can make sure that we're on the right side of this stuff. Because yeah, you know, weekly is overbought. This, that, and the other thing, like that could be a sign that maybe we're gonna pull back, but it, we're not gonna pull back without taking out these uptrends, taking out these smaller time frame EMAs. So you just gotta go a step at a time. And in crypto of all places, we know things can get nutty. So that's why trusting our trends is crucial in this game. So let's look at ETH a little bit more. Last 12 hour higher low is down at 2906. And currently bulls front run in this 12 hour 12 EMA that was pretty much around, you know, 3010 or something like that. And bulls are just pushing to new highs. So let's get a little bit of some structure on smaller time frames. What's our hour or four hour looking like? Okay. So now we've got a four hour 12 EMA rider. So bears would have to take out four hour 12 EMA for us to be looking down to 12 hour 12 EMA and anything over this 3,036 is going to be a four hour higher low next consolidation. So we do have relative weakness in ETH today as ETH BTC bears defend these highs. Bulls are absolutely pleased to have gotten up to resistance. And if consolidation remains a bull flag here, meaning pretty much if bulls hold daily 12 EMA, then this is a potential cup and handle on ETH BTC. And if we really want the ETH show to take off, bulls need to confirm this two week uptrend. There's certainly a reality where we tighten up on the two week time frame. Bulls now have a lot of room for a two week higher low if that happens. But if we're going to tighten up on the two week time frame on ETH BTC, then the daily 12 EMA will need to be lost. If bulls are holding daily 12 EMA, ETH BTC bulls are keeping their sights set on a two week uptrend and ultimately trying to get a quarterly bounce underway to see more sustained relative strength stick around here. So let's see, LTC actually kind of doing something. So we have bulls trying to set a weekly higher low. I say trying to do something, but we're still in a weekly equilibrium. Nothing's really gonna happen big time until this breaks. We've got our high, low, lower high, higher low, lower high at 73.45 and bulls trying to get a higher low set at 67.32 and LTC BTC to the dismay of LTC USD bulls still weak. We were talking all last week. If bulls don't get over daily 12 EMA, then LTC BTC remains a stinker in the intermediate term. If bulls don't get over weekly 12 EMA, it remains a stinker bigger picture. We got the setup for the inverse head and shoulders on the daily that we were talking about last stream, and it's puking it right back down to the lows. So for me, LTC is not a real viable trader until we break out of this range because we can anticipate when you're in a tightening range that your smaller time frame trends are going to be unclear. They're going to be unclear and we've got supreme clarity elsewhere. So that's typically where you want to focus unless you're just playing the extremities of the range. So what else we got? Soul, we're looking for that weekly higher low. And at this point, bulls are trying to shape it up quick. And this could be a, you could certainly make the argument for a weekly cup and handle, which we've got a slew of potential weekly cup and handles as that whole weekly lower high crew that we were talking about. They're all just getting right up on resistance. So if we see defense like we did on Seoul, lots of names, if weekly consolidation is healthy, we'll be a cup and handle and we'll look at those in a little bit. But Seoul, we, we actually had a handful of names here, including BTC, who had that 12 hour inverse head and shoulders set up. Seoul had it, um, Link had it, and is just now confirming AVAX had it. That is confirmed. And what was the other one? ADA. ADA had it. And you know, you'll see this often that when the 12 hour time frame is clear on one name, it increases the odds it might be clear on another name. And it's actually pretty interesting here right now, though, because 
Usually that will be like names moving in tandem on that time frame. But we've got a crew of names who had the inverse head and shoulders on the 12 hour. Bitcoin, Soul, Link, ABAX, ADA. And then we've got our 12 hour, 12 EMA riders, which is RNDR, ETH, uh, Jasmine was. Actually, let's see if Jasmine is still holding its 12 hour, 12 EMA. Yeah, still holding the 12 hour, 12 EMA there. So for whatever reason, 12 hours where it's at right now, and we'll just stick with that clarity while it is here. So let's see, what, what do soul bulls need to do to shape up the weekly higher low? You know, this is technically a daily uptrend, but we're still below the high of the previous week. So I don't know, I'll probably look at it on the two day and say bulls are gonna need a two day uptrend if we want to get that weekly higher low set with confidence. I think that's how that's how I'll view it right now. And I and I just like the 12 hour uptrend as the guide. So similar to Bitcoin, huge move up, but our hourly consolidation is underway here. Let's see, did Bitcoin start hourly consolidation? No, still pushing up. Still pushing up. So sole hourly consolidation. Gonna be looking for a higher low and a five minute downtrend guide. So with bears not seeing much follow through on these lower lows, this could certainly be an hourly bull flag, but Bitcoin would likely need to stay strong and fend off hourly consolidation if this were to be an hourly bull flag on Sol. But what I mean by the lack of follow through is, okay, you confirm your five minute downtrend straight into a bounce right back into the range. You confirm another five minute lower low straight into a bounce back into the range. So that's not what bears want to see to have any confidence in hourly consolidation, but in, in a bubble, this is a, a textbook hourly bull flag, but when you use your correlational clues and say, okay, well, you know, Bitcoin hourly RSI is at 80 and it's chugging upwards, is, is this sole lack of follow through on hourly consolidation purely because sole bears are not doing their job right now? Or is it because sole bears are kind of like waiting for Bitcoin to cool off? I tend to gravitate towards the latter but either way, you know, we're looking for we're looking for higher lows. We'll be looking for four hour, 12 hour hourly higher lows on Soul. Link, another one of our names where we're looking for the weekly higher low. We know if bulls hold the weekly 12 EMA, they remain healthy. And another name that had the 12 hour inverse head and shoulders that is now confirming, not with as much gusto as Soul by any means, but still gonna be looking for an hourly higher low. And What's on our daily? So I'm just going to view this as one daily move up. And if we're going to get the weekly higher low set from here, bulls need a daily uptrend. So if you weren't able to get in on these setups ahead of time and you're feeling FOMO, wait for a daily higher low. Look for back burners. So not that soul or link would be like technical back burners, but you know, just wait for some consolidation, look for oversold conditions in conjunction with a smaller time frame EMA. Let's see if we have any decent setup for it. I mean, the hourly could certainly be it, but that'd be a pretty aggressive entry in my opinion after a five and a half percent move. But yeah, no FOMO, wait for back burners. And also, you know, get in there, get in there uh, to, to shout out the, the community. I know I pulled this up last stream, but I'll, I'll continue to do it because what everybody's doing in here is just gangbusters. And you know, everybody's talking about, where's Dan? I'm telling you, Dan's here. 155, 156, he's hanging around. Everybody um, going for these setups, scouting all the juice and, and scouting the juice ahead of time. Like this is last night, Soul and Link 12 hour inverse head and shoulders will continue to be on watch into tomorrow. You know, when you when you scout this stuff ahead of time, then you're buying in with the proper risk to reward, playing off of support. Then you get the bounce, you get risk free, and now you can't go wrong. Um, so yeah, people just do an absolute work in here all, all hours of the day because it's not just uh, people in the Western Hemisphere over here. We've got a we actually just fired off a, a new channel. A bunch of our our UK members are going to do a London meetup. We've got members all over the world, some in Thailand, so, so the 
clock keeps spinning and when volatility is around, that's when it's time to put in the work and, and grind it out because you can make a lot more when there's volatility, obviously. So when there's not volatility, we want to pump the brakes. When there is volatility, we want to put in the work. So let's see, let's keep on going. So one of our, we, we had a handful of scouts last week. We had at the, if you go back to the end of last stream, it's like maybe the final minute. Um, I rattle off the top scouts and they, they, they all hit what you'd love to see. TIA is, is the weakest of the hits, looking for that to come back to life. And actually, I wouldn't even necessarily say this one hit because it's more of just like, a sympathy move up with everybody else for the TIA played a hit. We need to see TIA BTC come back to life. But either way, you know, you're still up almost 10%, 11% off of the low. So it was TIA. It was INJ bottom fish. That, that's the banger of it. So this is Friday when we're talking about this bottom fish. And we're up 17% now. We had ETH 12 hour, 12 EMA. To go back to that, that here's Friday when we're talking about it, up almost 10%. Then we had RNDR, 12 hour, 12 EMA. Not a huge move off of it, but still holding it, still opportunity to be playing off of it. What else did we have? SEI, four hour oversold and three day 12 EMA. Nice move off of that at this point. So it, it's always nice when you scout out a bunch of stuff and all of them hit. Feels sweet. So if you didn't watch the last stream, or you think TA is bogus, or you think we're scam artists at the chart guys, listen to the final minute of the last stream. Look at the charts then, look at the charts now, and, and understand why TA is sweet. And just like another e example of it, to, to pull some chart guys stuff back on here, you know, this is this morning in the, the uranium channel that we've got and, you know, the scout this morning, looking for daily oversold on these names, and then taking a crack at UEC, get in here, making some entries, and, and Red Devil, we didn't talk like, oh, I'm going to buy uranium today, but he, he took the exact same two plays. I got some UEC, I got some CCJ, he did the exact same things, then, you know, we're, we're scaling out along the way, and it's just, when you have a structure to your operations and other people have structures to their operations, y'all end up just kind of doing the same thing, which, you know, plays into like the self-fulfilling prophecy of TA. It's partially self-fulfilling prophecy, partially just because of the uh, fear and greed and supply and demand and, and that whole kit and caboodle. But let's get back into some crypto. So let's look at INJ. So we're holding weekly 12 EMA. And what we're wondering is, is this tightening range going to be similar to this tightening range where we see self healthy sideways consolidation, then another leg up. Right now, this is very healthy sideways consolidation. Bears have had plenty of opportunity to try to break things down and it's on bulls to get through resistance. So we're still in a balance range and this, the same things apply that in a balance range, you're playing off of the extremities. So bulls playing off the extremities have done very well. Bears playing off the extremities have also done very well. And this needs to resolve for INJ to get back on the map here. But nice relative strength the past few days after the support hold. And the number one thing that will shift relative weakness to relative strength or vice versa is a key support or resistance hold. Because think about it, you got traders coming in and playing off of that. Everybody last week who was watching for the INJ bottom fish, you've got a level to play off. So then you, you come in and you purchase, which puts upward pressure on. And then you got bears who are saying, all right, we're going to finally break support and get monthly consolidation underway. Well, when you hold support and bounce, what are they going to do? They're going to cover their position. So that's what shifts this relative strength and weakness at support and resistance. So INJ still more work to do. Looking at SEI, still certainly more work to do, but good start. I think it's another one where I'll look at the two day. We'll watch for a two day lower high compared to 103. And then bull's gonna need to 
get a two-day trend change? Hmm, I don't know. They could just go to higher highs. It probably will depend on what the space does. If Bitcoin stays strong, then some of these alts are going to be positioned well to continue going. And if Bitcoin dominance sets a daily lower high, then that would be another thing that helps these alts go. So we had alts doing better than Bitcoin over the last couple of weeks, but today with this bull break, Bitcoin is taking some of the limelight. Whoa, looks like we had another pretty big leg up here, huh? Yeah, bulls are cruising. Bulls are cruising. So that's probably hourly bull flag trying to confirm for soul. Link trying to do the same. So bulls in full control, ETH to new highs. Is that an hourly bull flag? Yeah, hourly bull flag, new highs on ETH. Bulls are in full control. What else we got here? Let's check in on our NDR. So it is cooling off a little bit. It is cooling off a little bit and you can see this relative weakness when you look at that hourly consolidation, almost 5% down. You compare that to Sol's little dinky or Link's little dinky or ET or uh, BTC's just failure to consolidate. So maybe we've got some daily consolidation fixing to shape up in RNDR. I guess we're just sideways, huh? What's our clarity? A 12 hour EQ. So if this 12 hour EQ breaks bull, we're looking back to all time highs and RNDR bulls remain in the limelight. Could just be healthy sideways consolidation. Could be the first sign that we've got some two day consolidation shaping up. Double two day inside bars, if those break bear, looking down to the 12 EMA, which acted as support on the way up. That's that. Let's look at FET. So FET is interesting, and this is another one. Um, this will find it real quick. Find it real quick. Give me a second. So, I don't know how I pull this over here. Yeah, I guess we'll just do it like this. So, you know, this is this is back in, you know, 23 days ago, February 3rd, looking at this falling wedge on FET. And obviously, huge follow through. We're up 142% off the lows. Bulls getting a daily higher low set with some follow through. And what do you know, another 12 hour 12 EMA rider is our guide. But the, the reason I want to bring some light onto FET is that, or no, that's, that's not the one I wanna bring light to. FET, well, FET we wanna bring light because it's a new blue sky bull that uh, I was confusing with uh, Phil in my mind. So FET 12 hour 12 EMA rider, weekly 12 EMA, bigger picture guide, fresh blue sky bull, so worth paying attention to. But Phil is, is what I want to look at because look at this basing pattern here. We've been basing for nearly two years at the lows. And then let's look at link basing pattern, multiple years at the lows. It's not all time lows, but multiple year basing pattern when we broke out, that's what had Link be our first alt to really pop um, in the fall there. And then you look at Jasmine basing pattern for multiple years at the bottom, you get the breakout and then it goes. So Phil, I, I have kind of been feeling like it's a turd because it didn't, well, one, because it is, we're still down at the lows while many coins are off the lows. But two, the shorter time frame. TA was just not as clear where, you know, I, I didn't feel that I had a lot of clarity on it. So I was kind of just kicking it to the curb, but seeing this basing pattern has me keeping eyes on it because that's the type of thing when it breaks, it could see a very quick hundred percent pop. And, and another one doge, it, it's not the same, but it, it, these long-term tightening patterns you want to keep eyes on. And if we see, a full-blown crypto um, alt season, then everybody's, or not everybody's going to get a turn, but a lot of people are going to get a turn. And you better bet that the meme coins are going to get a turn. And, and what would be required for something like that would be like a, a Bitcoin dominance six-month lower high 
or yearly lower high. And this is something that Trend, one of our um, absolutely gangster members in the chart, guys, he's, we are, I don't know if we call him the alt whisperer, but I certainly call him the alt whisperer. He's, he's incredibly, incredibly good. And he's watching for the potential that we get a six month lower high on Bitcoin dominance and come down and, and we see an alt season. So that's what he's positioning for with a swing mindset right now and all of this stuff. He's got stops in place so that if he's wrong, he stops out and he's taking partial profit. So if he stops out, he doesn't lose money. You know, none of us can predict what's going to happen, but we just have to look at the charts and paint potentials and then put ourselves in positions to capitalize on those potential outcomes. So keeping an eye on Phil and its base, keeping an eye on Doge and its base, keeping an eye on FET now that it's at all time highs. Let's see what Wild is doing. So kind of cooling off here. Another 12 hour, 12 EMA rider. And this is a potential 12 hour head and shoulders actually on WLD, but you know, blue sky bull going to be keeping eyes on it. If we confirm the 12 hour head and shoulders or just lose our 12 hour higher low down here at 760. And we'll be looking down at daily 12 EMA. And as long as bulls are holding daily 12 EMA, they are chilling. They are chilling. So let's pop through our weekly lower high crew as, as it just becomes compromised one by one, which you'll remember a few weeks ago, I think it was maybe, maybe it was when Bitcoin went to higher highs. Maybe it was when ETH went to higher highs, but the talk was, you know, the more alts that go to weekly higher highs when a weekly lower high was the most likely scenario, then the greater the odds are that others are going to follow. And, you know, we're, what monitoring volume and the whole kit and caboodle, but who is it? Theta, weekly lower high crew, increasing bull volume, blasting to higher highs. So we'll slide that down to the end of the list with Phil as you know, increasing bull volume. That's how you get the less likely scenario. So we've now got two out of here in Matic bumping up right on resistance. If we reject, that'd be a weekly cup and handle but daily 12 EMA going to continue to be the guide. And to repeat myself on this, even though we are watching out for the potential of weekly lower highs here, we don't just YOLO into this stuff. We then zoom in and look for clues that a weekly lower high may be shaping up. If you're not losing the daily 12 EMA, no weekly lower high is going to shape up. So that's what allows us to, to stay on the right side of these things. And again, it's the if then statements. So you open your mind up to a potential due to the larger time frame, most likely scenarios. Then you gauge volume to see is the most likely scenario still remaining most likely because volume supports it or doesn't support it. And then you zoom in to see what is the health on these smaller time frames to let us know, could this be shaping up? Could this not be shaping up? So no sign of it on Matic and we're coming up to resistance 109. Let's look at Matic BTC. I haven't looked at this in a minute. We haven't looked at this in a minute. Still kind of just chilling. If, if Matic bulls want to come to life, th this is very similar to ETH BTC. We had a quarterly tightening range. We broke support and bears aren't seeing follow through. So what do bulls need to do to bring Matic to the show? Is it a two week 12 EMA rider? I mean, kind of these wicks though, not, not very clear. Yeah. We can just say Matic BTC needs, needs to get over 2554 as, as, as at a bare minimum to try to shift some momentum. And that's what could have us see what we're seeing on ETH right now on Matic. So we'll just go one step at a time. It's not really doing much daily equilibrium. If it breaks bear, weekly lower high set. If it breaks bull, we are breaking our only resistance before that 25.54. So that level is 20.75. So let's see, let's go back through the list. AXS, still very far from weekly resistance, but and failed the downtrend. This was one of the ones that was looking like, okay, bulls are trying to do it. And we were talking about this, I think Friday, 
have to get the daily downtrend. You get a big move up on increasing volume, less likely scenario happens and, and bears are back to square one. So ETC, even our, our one that did get the weekly lower high set, and we're right back up to the highs. So bears really have nothing to hang their hat on anywhere at this point. AAVE, still a lot of room for it. Saved by the uni news on Friday and back to a daily stair step. Tons of room for a daily high or low. Adam, same deal. Lost the daily 12 EMA. Still have tons of room for a weekly lower high, but you've got to confirm your downtrend. No downtrend, increasing bull volume back to new highs. And GMT, the only one that's still kind of weak, but we've got this increasing bull volume here. So still tons of room for that lower high. See, it really is the only one that's still looking good for it because everybody else, like ADA, you know, if we set our lower high here, bulls are going to be watching for a cup and handle. Matic, if we set a lower high here, bulls are going to be watching for a cup and handle. No one else is that close to resistance yet, and the others have just blasted through at this point. So let, let's look at those DEX coins, actually, by the way. So sushi bulls, relative weakness today. You can see this whole list actually has relative weakness except for the king, or no, that's not the king, that's the turd, UNFI. But to see another leg up after that news is just another thing that's indicative of a, a bullish environment. Even just seeing bullishness on the news, and I don't even know what the, the news was, but in a bearish environment, you can get bullish news and it doesn't do diddly. In a bullish environment, you can get neutral news and it'll do a lot. Um, and you know, you can kind of parse together the other variations of that combo, but it, it, that's another one of the more kind of like meta elements of this game when we're evaluating like social sentiment and, and stuff like that. Is good news good? Is bad news bad? Is good news bad? Is bad news good? You know, these things tell us what's kind of going on under the hood. So sushi looking for a daily higher low, daily 12 EMA guide. Uni looking for a daily higher low, daily 12 EMA guide, cooling off a little bit here. CRV, same deal, daily 12 EMA guide, looking for a daily higher low. One inch, just barely consolidating. So this one, it did get a decent second leg but I feel like we've given back more off the top than peers, not in percentage sense, but in a relative sense, which that was the same as Friday, intraday. Uh, same relationship. And UNFI, the turdiest of the crew, it didn't get the second leg up, but it is holding on better here today. I'm not even going to, I should stop talking about UNFI. It's such a turd. Such a turd. Take a little scroll through the watch list and see how Ape's doing, speaking of turds. So it did get its first monthly uptrend in the history of this coin. So shift is on on Ape. Daily 12 EMA guide. Really nice day here today. And 30% move off of the daily higher low. So tons of volatility. Anybody else sticking out? I think that's it. Let's look, let's look at XRP. Weak, weak. So it got the, the falling wedge bull break, but very weak here still. That's should be on the weekly lower high list. And it looks like it's shaping up more than peers. But yeah, that is that. Let's see what y'all are looking at. Oh, I forgot I pinned the Awaken to the Ones comment about how I'm handsome. I pinned it as a joke, but still pinned here. Half hour later, we'll unpin that. See if we have any new candidates for a pinning. Revy, what up? Happy to see you here. Jahanzi, thanks for tuning in. I'm doing great, man. Hope you're doing the same. Chris Shermer, the legend. CH Art Man, if you're a Truck Guys member. That's Chris Shermer there. The only man I know who can have 39 open positions at once. I don't even know 39 instruments, dude. Crazy. And awaken to the one, a man after my own heart. Thank you for the compliment, sir. Sean, happy you're here. What up, Deegans? What up, Deegans? Deegan? Degen? I don't know. All right. Yeah, crypto moods. It's LTC is just going to be all about the break. 
um, it, it is, you know, I'm looking at the same thing and we can draw it out there and we'll slap it on. You know, we're getting tight and volatility is going to come in. But until that volatility comes in with the break, you're just playing short off the highs and long off the lows. And if the space were to remain strong from here and LTC, BTC can get a weekly bounce underway, then that's the environment that could see LTC, USD break this, get some follow through and get a quarterly higher low shape down up. But it's really tough to want to put money bullish into LTC when your relative weakness is at all time lows. Um, so I'd probably, at the bare minimum, wait for this thing to get over daily 12 EMA. And this thing meaning LTC, BTC. Just kind of a stinker for the time being. Let's see. Yes, the OG Itchy. Requesting people to drop a like. If you can follow that man's requests, we'd all appreciate it. Helps the algos, as y'all know. Let's see, INJ two week time frame. Says star Pacro. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Yeah, getting interesting because it's tight. It's super tight. Uh, I'm liking the weekly for the 12 EMA because we've been riding that for a while here now. Um, but you know, whether you're looking at the two week inside bars, a three-day balance range, a weekly equilibrium that's a little sloppy. The one thing we know is things are tightening up here now. And if the space stays strong, then looking for INJ to take some rotation back. You know, it was a lead bull here. It was a lead bull here. And then it cooled off sideways and healthy. It's cooling off sideways and healthy now, but bull's got to get back through resistance if it's going to if it's gonna do the whole lead bull thing again. Let's see, crypto wondering if we get rotation into ETH catch up trade. I don't really know the time frame that you're talking about, but I, I would anticipate some intermediate rotation back into ETH, at least for a four hour bounce at some point here. We're probably at our hourly back burner. So we've had this whole move up without hourly oversold, and we're hitting that hourly oversold on ETH BTC now. So if bulls. I feel like a 10 minute 12 EMA rider. Nah. Five minute, five minute down. So if bulls can get over five minute 12 EMA on ETH BTC, then that's when ETH USD could catch up for another leg higher. In in terms of like a relative strength sense. Because if as long as Bitcoin remains strong, you know, ETH is still going to be doing fine here in the, the intermediate term. But if we're talking about ETH trying to get up four and a half, five percent on the day. Um, unless, you know, with how the current relationship is, Bitcoin would need to then be up like eight percent or something like that. But if we're trying to have ETH join BTC, then ETH BTC needs to hit that hourly oversold back burner and, and ideally follow through at least to a four hour bounce. But we'll be looking for a four hour lower high. There's enough room for that to be formed and if bears can confirm a four hour downtrend then we're going to be looking to daily 12 EMA and if bulls hold daily 12 EMA this is a potential cup and handle if they lose that then that's when ETH cools off for several weeks perhaps as we tighten up on this two week time frame let's see here thank you Revy you know uh a chart guys member and friend his name is Tahir he bought this hat for me he he actually came from Portugal he was like hey I want to watch you trade live and we set something up and and he came here and, and did a bit of an in-person workshop and he ragged on me for my hats uh, because they're like 15 years old and all ratty and I love him but he hates him and he got me this hat I'm very grateful very generous dude very generous dude. What up, Mr. Ryan Healy, starving chartist? Theta USD for interfans, interfans. T H E T A USDT. 
I have entry at 133, you say. Nice. Let's go to the weekly. So this is our most recent weekly higher high crew when a lower high was the most likely and you're in from 133. So you are nicely in profit. And it's just going to be all about the daily 12 EMA. So if you haven't taken any partial profits, I'd probably consider that or walk up a stop for a portion of your position on maybe like the four hour uptrend. Or you can just take some off into strength. The, the, the reason I say this is that Theta could pull back to the daily 12 EMA, which is nearly back to your entry at this point. If that continues to walk up and you know we enter consolidation from here, it can pull back to daily 12 EMA and be completely healthy. So what we want to do is make sure that we can get our average below the invalidation point of whatever type of trade we're in. So I'm, I'm a big advocate of scaling in, scaling out. Because, you know, at this point, you could sell like a quarter of your position, drop your average to what, or let's just say a third for easy math, and, and that would drop your average to like the 120s and have you below that 12 EMA. But also, it depends on your intention on the trade. Is this a position where you're trying to give bulls chance for a full-blown alt season and, and you want to try to hold this to 350? If that's the case, then you know maybe you're not too worried about taking a small loss on a stop out or something like that because your overall risk to reward is still proper. But you know if it's like a day trade or a short term swing trade, daily RSI up at 80, probably not a bad spot to take some partial profits. I imagine everything's torqued. Yeah, you know, four hour overbought hourly, it's just cooled off, so you can walk some stops. You can take some off into strength, put a break even stop below the low, toss it in the hard wallet and, and hope to check back in in the summer. Rich. Or yeah, those are those are some of your options. Or you can hold it down to zero when the crypto haters end up being right. Or you can hold it to 10 when the crypto crypto maxis end up being right. Uh, all about your, and, and this brings up an important point. Ideally, you have that figured out before you get into the trade. You know, what is your, what are your intentions? What is your risk? And how do you plan to manage the trade? Are you taking partials? Are you walking up stops with daily higher lows? In a crypto, in a bullish rotational crypto market, walking stops is very beneficial because these things go further than everybody anticipates in both directions. All right, let's take a look at Alice for Joey Games. I've never seen J-O-W-I-E. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but we're name partners, Alice. Alice USDT, whoa, another, another weekly lower high name that has gone to higher highs. Every one that does this increases the odds that the others are gonna follow, um, as I've been saying consistently, and now, as I was saying maybe a month ago, that this lower high list is also a laggard bull watch list. The folks who went the laggard bull approach with this watch list are doing a lot better than the folks who are waiting for weekly lower highs. That is for sure. And I was I was firm on the weekly lower highs. You all know that, but that's why it's important to be able to shift our bias and identify that, like, oh snap, Bitcoin went to higher highs. We gotta you know, watch for others to do the same. Oh snap, ETH went to higher highs. We gotta watch for others to do the same. And even if you're not doing that, the volume tells you. So Alice, we are popping, we're quite extended, and we may be from a historical standpoint extended. Yeah, new all-time high daily RSI. That is pretty impressive. It's gonna be about the daily uptrend. We've got a ton of room for a daily higher low. We have a four hour 12 EMA rider. So as long as four hour 12 EMA is support, no daily consolidations shaping on up. You're gonna be watching back burners probably hourly at this point. Um, have we had a failed five minute? No, we haven't had a five minute even hit since down here. No, I guess we had one there. So I mean, the aggressive bulls can be going for a five minute back burner, but the way relative 
weakness is here in the short term, I'd probably be a bit patient. Maybe 15 minute oversold and four hour 12 EMA. We can see if those line up. So I turn on the RSI tool, drop a line on 15 minute oversold, mark it up, go to the four hour chart, see if it aligns with the EMA. 15 minute oversold, four hour 12 EMA. That would that'd be the next entry. Um, more patience waiting for hourly oversold and daily 12 EMA. All right, Adam for Costa. Adam is, and we talked about this a little bit here. So it's, it's part of our weekly lower high crew, still quite far from weekly resistance, 1260. That is a good 14% away and bears failed to confirm the daily downtrend. So at this point, we're not in a daily uptrend or a daily downtrend. We're in, we're in a no trend area and it's, if bears were to show up here and now, could be like a bit of a megaphone, but still I would say in this environment that a daily higher low compared to 967 is the most likely scenario unless we see increasing bear volume. So resistance overhead is 1142 and that's pretty much it until the 1260. We've got a little dinker here at 1222 and in the shorter term, See, we don't have an hourly uptrend we have, but we have bulls trying for an hourly bull flag, trying to get an hourly higher low set at 1088. We can say bulls have tight control if that is support. If that's lost, that's four hour consolidation shaping up. And we've got a four hour 12 EMA rider. So same as what we're talking about with Alice, bulls are gonna be looking for four hour higher lows off the 12 EMA. And if that holds, then there's no daily consolidation. If four hour 12 EMA is lost, that's when daily consolidation shapes up. And then we look for a daily higher low. Let's see, Revy already calling for new Bitcoin all time high. Yeah, I tell you, if bears can't take out the weekly 12 EMA, it's, it's inevitable, but all time high, while it looks close on the log chart, it's still eh, kind of starting to look close on this chart. The, the linear chart, 26% away and off of the last weekly move, we've now gone 41%. Y'all know that I am very open to the six month lower high, but I'm equally as open to all time highs. It's gonna depend on the smaller time frame trends. I'll, I'll talk about the six month lower high because the time to get bullish is not right below resistance unless you have a really close stop. But then this is the beauty of TA. You don't have to commit to oh, a six month lower high is going to form. Is it the most likely scenario? Yes. Is it losing likelihood with each leg up that we take? Yes, also yes. So it's not gonna shape up without losing the weekly 12 EMA and ultimately the monthly 12 EMA. And at this point, bulls are seeing absolutely everything that they want to see. Absolutely everything that they want to see. You know, bears have ample opportunity in here to get a weekly lower high set try to confirm a weekly downtrend, take out weekly 12 EMA, failed and got absolutely crapped on for a beastie move. And then they have a second chance to try to get some weekly consolidation underway. And so far, they're getting crapped on again. So bears not proven anything. All right, let's see, Ryan saying Matic working on that monthly higher low. Let's take a look. Uh, it's the battle of the time frames. Yeah, monthly higher low is set on Matic and trying to get the monthly uptrend with the bull break of 109. But I'm, I'm still uh, cautious because of this broader tightening range. I, I've been looking at on the quarterly high, low, lower high, higher low, and I would still anticipate a lower high uh, compared to this 156 but not if bears can't confirm a weekly downtrend, that's for sure. That is for sure. All right, yeah, let's look at ICP. I haven't looked at ICP in a minute. Internet computer protocol. And at the end of the stream, I'm actually gonna tell a funny ICP story. Or maybe I'll do it midstream. 
But ICP, very similar to Sol, we're tightening up on the weekly. We are tightening up on the weekly, bulls trying to shape up a quick weekly higher low. As long as they're holding weekly 12 EMA, they are fine. And on the daily here, I'm just uh, daily bounce underway. So bulls still have a good bit of work to do. They need to bounce big enough on the daily to create room for a daily trend change. And that is that. Let's look into the hourly, hourly bull flag, trying to confirm. Bull's got to break over 1296 to get it done. And that's pretty much that. Let's look at ICP BTC. I'm going to have to tell the Matic or the ICP story now because I'm just giggling thinking about it. So, yeah, this is. ICP bulls need to see this daily stair step break and need to get a daily uptrend on ICP BTC for anything to shift. So let's, uh, I'm going to try to, I'm going to find it over here. The uh, old FTX listing. Why is this not uh, alphabetical order? So Devin was visiting, um, Devin from the chart guys. And this was right when ICP had uplisted. Where is it on here? Here it is. So it's or not uplisted, but listed or whatever. It was right when ICP listed, and we were going over to dance um, for something. And there's not a lot of sell service on the way over there. And we were looking to buy this ICP dip, this first one off of the high. And we set some scales in. And like when you're setting scales in a in a super bullish crypto environment, you want to be prepared to go down lower than you need to. Essentially, that's the name of the game with scaling in general. If you're going to do like a, a very loose scale with very open risk, you, your lower scales are just for things get really effed up. And we put these scales in thinking there's no way these things are going to all fill we get over the, once you get over the mountain onto Dan's side of the mountain, you lose cell service. So we got no cell service, we're rolling down. And then right when we pull into Dan's driveway, we get a little blip of service and the alert went off that all of our ICP bids filled. And we're like, holy crap. And this was like, you know, keep in mind, this is in a, very bullish environment so we're being very aggressive and that essentially was like we were 3x all in and we're like oh my god this is probably not good that we got filled on everything and that's on this pullback here um and then we get up to dan's house and there's no cell service there and i try to get on the wi-fi no wi-fi and you know we're at dan's house so we want to tell him like what's going on I'm like, hey, you know, Dan, the Wi-Fi. And he's like, oh, yeah, I had to unplug it for this, that, and the other thing. And then he goes, I'll get it back up in a second. I'm I'm recording some duck videos. And he's got his camera, and he goes down to the pond. And he's, like, crouched down, taking these videos of ducks. And we're sitting there sweating bullets because we're 3X all in some new shit coin that is dumped 50% off the top. Um but he ended up getting his internet hooked up. By the time it was back up, it had bounced like a ton and it was a massive win. And yeah, it's just funny. I'll never forget this because my final scale actually bottom ticked it. It was 238 to the, the penny, um, which kind of salvaged the situation for me because then at that point I had a pretty good average. And then when it bounced up, you know, it was a nice win for us. But so funny just the uh the contrast of just being worried about worried about dan uh or not worried about dan but not wanting to tell dan like dude you need to get the internet up now we're like oh no take your time we're trading responsibly good times seriously good times i miss those days man of ftx and just full-blown crypto euphoria so fun so fun all right. I think that's, uh, yeah, APCA did INJ in the beginning. Man, a bunch of messages getting redacted in here. I don't know if the bot's popping off or if y'all are misbehaving or if we got a mod in here. Mod in here being a fun sucker. 
I don't think I can see what the deleted messages were. That's okay. All right, I think we got one more CHZ, and then we'll wrap it up. CHZ going to new highs up and over this uptrend resistance line. And let's get some bigger picture context. I think this is, yeah, so we're over monthly 12 EMA. I would still anticipate a monthly lower high compared to 17,920. That's not going to shape up without the weekly trend becoming compromised. It did technically shape up here, but just the loss of the weekly uptrend, you need the downtrend. And now we're just weekly stair stepping up, remaining very strong. We are, is this another 12 hour 12 EMA rider? Another 12 hour 12 EMA rider. So bulls are in full control as long as 12 hour 12 EMA is support. As far as resistances, we are coming up into an area of resistance around 14 and a half cents. And that is that on cheese. Bulls like to be seen the second leg up with the other 12 hour, or like to see the second leg up because not every 12 hour 12 EMA rider is, is doing that. Like if we look at R and DR, you know, not quite getting that next leg yet. All right, let's check back in on Bitcoin. Staying strong at the highs. We'll stick with our 15 minute uptrend, 15 minute 12 EMA, an hourly stair step, and then we'll just be watching how bulls respond to back burners as they come on down. So does five minute oversold mark an hourly higher low on Bitcoin? into higher highs, that's the most bullish scenario. If that doesn't happen, be watching 15 minute oversold. And these these are not like back burners, I wouldn't say. Um, I mean, it's a nice move, but it's not like an insane move there. So I wouldn't call them like clinical back burners, but we can still watch how price responds to those levels. Um, so, Let's see, real quick, ADA for ER Berg. So ADA, talked about it a little bit. If we see weekly consolidation here, bulls are gonna be looking for the cup and handle. I wouldn't call this a two week or monthly inverse head and shoulders really personally myself. Um, you know, when you kind of got to force a pattern on or if you're like, hey, it's an inverse head and shoulders, hear me out, you know, and have to explain it, then it's probably not worth um, I are classifying it as that. We got nice weekly 12 EMA guide, weekly uptrend, just gonna stick with that personally. And bulls kind of getting saved by the upside across the space because this was the recipe for the lower high to shape up. You lose the daily 12 EMA, you get a weak daily lower high, and then bears tried for the downtrend, bulls defense support right back to the highs. So failure by bears to get that daily or weekly lower high set. And now it's just all about this high of 64.14. And then we're looking up at the double top here at 68 to see, does it join our crew of lower high, most likely coins that just go to higher highs? It does have increasing bull volume. So it's, it's looking okay after the support hold here. There's names that are looking better that haven't lost daily 12 EMA but it's, it's being recovered here at this point. So hourly bull flag confirming, bulls in tight control as long as 60.58 is support. And if that were lost, that'd be four hour consolidation shaping up with lots of room for a four hour higher low. All right. Oh, ADA ETH. ADA ETH. So monthly consolidation underway, looking for a higher low, no sign of it yet. Weekly downtrend guide for monthly consolidation. Anything below 23.15 gonna be a weekly lower high. And daily bounce, trying to get underway, daily stair step. If bulls are gonna get a weekly bounce underway, gotta get a daily bounce first and regain a daily uptrend, but bears in control on ADA ETH since mid-December. All right, real quick here, got to do 
a little marketing stuff. We, you know, we've got this giveaway. Where's the link for it? Hmm. You know, we're doing a giveaway of, of three free one month trials on the chart guys. And this is the chart guys. This is, uh, this is our website that Toby made. It's absolutely sweet. Got the user dashboard here with all your stuff, your most recent daily video, your economic events, any any courses or uh, services that you subscribe to, like the Swing Report. You know, the, the report has its sweet interface within here where Lamont's daily updates come on through, tracks all the trades, lets you know have they hit your entry zone? Have you hit your stop zone? Have you gotten to your target? And, and again, he's just been so freaking good with this. Just three stopouts since October 29th. And that's the just the zone stopping out. I think the trades that he actually takes on here, I don't know if he's had any. Um, he went from May until December or January without a single miss on the live traded swing report name. So, you know, that's separate, but I can't not just shout it out because it's the most underused service that we've got. But something sweet that we just added here is a cannabis hub with rumors that the DEA is gonna deschedule cannabis. We've now got our cannabis hub here with all the juice. You got your, your news feed comes in, it's got your tickers, all your stuff on that, your watch list, it's, you know, Toby's a wizard. We're like, hey, can we have a cannabis hub? He whipped this up in like two days. Um, but, you know, is our crypto profits going to rotate into cannabis? There's a little bit of a weird inverse relationship going on right now. Um, but yeah, it's uh, this is the chart, guys. And then as as I've shown in here a good number of times before already this stream, you know, the, the main deal with the chart guys is the chat room. You know, we've got live streams going on. Lori's about to pop off another one here. You got your crypto channels. You know, and I told you Dan's still around. Here he is. Ooh, and he's got some bear glasses on. Let's see what Dan's looking at. Watching an uptrend resistance line on the daily on Bitcoin. So, yeah, worth keeping an eye on. And this is why Dan's the GOAT. When, when everything gets bullish, he keeps his poise. So obviously you always got to watch out for, for the rug pull. But the thing is, is like the rug's not going to get pulled without losing the daily 12 EMA. So just keeping it simple with that. As long as daily 12 EMA is support, then bulls are in full control. But yeah, we're doing this giveaway. It ends tomorrow. Let me, let me find the, the link for it. Just give me a second. I want to pull up the official page. I want to pull up the official page because it's pretty. So yeah, you can win a free one month membership. Got 17 hours left. And you know, there's going to be three winners, but there may or may not be something that makes it worth your while, even if you don't win. I'll, I'll just say that. I can't say anything more than that, but uh, you should sign up. You should sign up. If you haven't hit like on this video, please hit the like button. Helps the algos, helps Dan not fire me. Uh, Barbara Evans, the swing report does not come with the Chart Guys membership. It's a separate, it's a separate gig. And if you go to chartguys.com, there's a lot more information out there on that. Um, but yeah, Lamont is, is freakishly good. I don't know how he does it. But yeah, hit the like button if you haven't. Thank you for that. If you're not subscribed and you like charts, you like TA, then give it a try. Hit subscribe on YouTube. It's free. If you hate us, you can unsubscribe. And that's all I've got here for today. Let's see how far bulls can take it. Bulls are still just chugging on BTC. Bears aren't going anywhere without 15 minute 12 EMA being lost, without the hourly stair step being lost. And then we're looking for hourly higher lows, four hour higher lows, 12 hour higher lows. And at this point, daily higher lows, and then weekly higher lows. That's the beauty of being in uptrends. Bears could show up with a vengeance now. 
And then you got bulls, you got so many bulls waiting for the next weekly higher low because this one was scary. But it's worth noting, weekly consolidation is probably always going to be scary. You got to just find a pattern, set your risk, and set the playoff. Or wait for until you have something very clear like this, or clear like this, where you can go in and have a low risk trade. And it is worth noting here, you know, this is off of the hourly back burner. We're always talking about these back burners. It's off the hourly back burner and now we're to new highs. It's just exactly what bulls want to see. So that's all I've got here. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll probably see you Thursday, I would think. If not Thursday, Friday. We'll see how the week's action plays on out. Take it easy. Adios.